Donna, there's a controversy going on uh, on social media about an incident with respect to women's college basketball. Admittedly, not something I follow all that closely. Well, let me Lay it out for me. A lot of people are following this. This is one of the most watched games. It set all kinds of records. But what people are talking about right now is what is perceived to be a difference of treatment between two players, Angel Reese of LSU and Caitlin Clark of Iowa, both of whom made a kind of gesture, like a kind of like a taunting gesture on the court. What is this? This is Ka taunting? That is, is a kind of, now you, now you see me gesture, you can see it up on the screen. So Caitlin Clark, okay. the white player on the top, made it first in an earlier game in the series, and then Angel Reese, I believe at, at the end of their uh, championship win, LSU's championship win, made the gesture in response back to Caitlin Clark. In response to uh, Angel Reese making that that gesture, a number of prominent figures called her out. Uh, Keith Olbermann tweeted, what an effing idiot. Mm. Um, uh, a uh, bar, founder of Barstool Sports, Portnoy, uh, called Reese a, quote, classless piece of SHIT on Twitter. Uh, and this launched this a some strong language. battle. Right. And, and many people pointed out that when um, Caitlin made the exact same gesture, there was none of this outrage, and the implication is, or the outright accusation is, that black players are being treated differently than white players. This has been a theme when a, when a lot of kind of like celebratory or on court kind of mocking mm -hmm. behavior happens, that it only seems to be called out or noticed when it's black players doing it. So now we've, we've looked at these clips. What do you make of this whole thing? I mean, I, I guess to be totally fair to the people who were um, calling out um, the, uh, the, the second player, they're saying it was. Uh, long, Clark is longer and more deliberate and more directly in the other person's face, but um, I, I don't know. You can see the other person doing it. Maybe it's just, it's one of those things where it wasn't the, the first player doing it wasn't closely caught on tape or something, and then you know you never can quite say why. Well, we go we certainly have the footage now, and Clark. Many people are saying that the the issue really is that Clark didn't have as much swag <laughs> that when she did the gesture didn't have as much impact or oomph as when Reese did it and that Reese shouldn't be penalized for just see when I saw so I, I just saw the them gesture better side by side if I had just seen um, Clark's gesture out of context I might have thought that was like I don't know do, do they do this in basketball like signaling a play or something or like this is we're, we're, we're gonna do the wavy one I don't know <laughs> well you're not exactly the, the world's That's, uh, admittedly focused sportsman I wouldn't have known here. it was necessarily uh, but people who do follow sports a lot uh, like Jamel Hill who uh, used to be at ESPN until 2018 mm -hmm. a quote tweeted Portnoy's post that's the Barstool News guys post on Monday saying so I'm gonna pick this fight F you they've been going at it she's been tweeting a defensive Reese this whole time she's not the only one basketball Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal replied to Portnoy saying and so is your mother <laughs> Like, all kinds of people have come out of the woodwork. I believe LeBron James tweeted in defense of Reese. As so Keith Olbermann is getting owned by some uh, conservatives who hate him because he's a ridiculous person and it's easy to make fun of him. And he's, he's the most self-parodying person probably on the planet, certainly on social media. Um, so there was a lot of, like, like, liberals owning Keith Olbermann, conservatives praising that. I don't know. People are all over the place on this one. They, they are. I mean, look, Keith Olbermann's response in particular, I think, was kind of pathetic. Um, he responded to some of his cri critics with a, with a video of his separate coverage of Trump's indictment as though to say, hey, look, I'm doing good work over oh, yeah, here. Stop. Why are you criticizing me? I hate Trump. Like, that should be a get-out-of-jail-free car. <laughs> right, and then when people questioned why it was that he tweeted that, he, wrote, he like, responded to Shaq. No, he responded to Shaq. There it is. Shaq's yeah. initial um, you know, tweet back at him saying, well, what have you been doing since you got out of the NBA, Shaq? Like, Shaq hasn't been a successful news broadcaster since then, and, like, somehow he's a loser because at age 60 or however old he is, he's no longer playing professional basketball as one of the greatest players of all time. I don't, yeah. I don't know what he's been doing since he appeared in that movie that he maybe didn't appear in. Remember the... <laughs> Kazam, Shazam, that, Sha yeah. Shazam. We all have that false implanted memory <laughs> yeah. of, uh, of the genie movie with him or right. whatever it is. Yeah. Right, well, it seems to be working out pretty well for Angel Reese. Uh, she's got, a, a, apparently, an, an on top of all of these supporters on the internet, an incredible boost to her social media. She's become a, a small celebrity. I think a lot of black people really feel like she is a stand-in for 
the kind of unequal, disparate treatment that they mm -hmm. feel they've experienced as a consequence of presenting a different way in public, and that you can do the exact same actions of another but person. But is the answer that really that neither of these players should have done this? Maybe, but that wasn't the issue. If people had mm -hmm. called out Caitlin Clark and then also called out Angela Re uh, Angel Reese, I don't think it would have been an issue. But that is exactly the opposite of what happened. And so mm -hmm. again and again, we it, seem, it seems like when their only variable here is the color of somebody's skin, or if you want to call it the swag with which they do a gesture as opposed to the idea of the gesture itself, then I think there's a credible claim that people are really responding to the idea of um, Angel Reese being too ghetto or too hood. And she responded to that directly in a press conference um, uh, after after the game, and when, and what she said, you know, I it's, I can't I, like I'm too ghetto for some people. Like I can't I can't ever win, and I'm tired of trying. And her response through all of this has been really to stand her ground and say that I didn't do anything wrong, and this has been an unequal tra treatment, and to not be apologetic. And I think that's a lot of why people have rallied behind her because they're frankly sick of having to try to conform to some ideal that is never in their eyes going to think that they measure up regardless as, well, as evidenced by, you know, that Caitlin did the same thing. So apparently we're learning from our producers, Joe Biden. Can you repeat that? Joe Biden is inviting both players to a sit well, down. It's, it's Jill Biden. So Jill this, Biden. this is the, oh. the latest scuttlebutt. I was going to say, this, this seems maybe not like Jill Biden has decided to, to reach out and invite both teams to the White House, a privilege that's normally in, enjoyed by only the winning team of an NAACP oh. uh, Is this going to be like a sit down, like the beer summit? Exactly. Exactly the comparison people are making on the internet, that this is very both sides -ing something that shouldn't be a both sides issue. There was one clear um, team. But maybe it are, should be a both sides well, issue because asking, they both shouldn't have done that. Well, Robbie, do we think that if Iowa had won that championship, LSU would have been invited to the White House? Oh, I see what you're saying. And that's, that's the problem. Well, yeah, I don't know. Um, do we have a, a tweet of, of uh, was it Reese that was tweeting at Jill? Um, she tweeted three cry emojis, a joke, in response to the story that, that Jill Biden wants to invite both of them. And I saw some other Who folks. Who tweeted that? Who was that? A a Angel Reese, the LSU oh, player. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, so she does not want to sit down for a. Nope. Yeah. Nope. And, and other people, I saw some other folks say, like, no disrespect to Jill Biden. Like, these are people who are, like, you know, liberals who like the Bidens, but, like, this is just not the move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And, and I, I appreciate that. It seems very clear to me that, that if the roles were reversed, there's no way the losing team would be brought into the White House. And the racial dynamics of what these two teams represent and all of that, it's just a very thorny issue. And if I were advising the White House, I'd advise them to stay the heck out of it. Follow norms, invite the winning team, and keep it pushing. Because at a certain point, it does really start to undermine the incredible athletic achievement that the women on this LSU team um, achieved. And also this matchup, which apparently was just really terrific and, and garnered an enormous, unprecedented amount of viewership. Um, it, it's a real turning point, potentially, for women's sports. And there's a gender aspect of this, too. I do wonder, regardless of race, whether anybody would be paying attention to any of these gestures if these were male players who routinely engage in this kind of behavior on the court, like it or not, is there a differential in, in how those two groups are being treated here as well? Bigger game than the NBA All-Stars game, apparently, in terms of people watching. Is that so? Yeah. Wow. All right, thank you for educating me on that little story. I appreciate it, and we'll have more rising after this.